What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So, so in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on from Casey Sheep Design to help you quickly add assets to your asset libraries in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is an interesting tool. Um, I will link to it in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link. Um, but this is an interesting tool in the sense that it's designed to make creating an asset library in Blender a lot easier. Um, and so basically what this does is this automates some of the things that you have to do in order to create those assets, specifically having to do with the rendering of the thumbnails, um, which can be uh, pretty time consuming if you're adding a bunch of different things to your asset library. All right, and so it's pretty easy to mark objects as assets, right? You come over here, you right click and you mark it as an asset right here. But depending on how this is set up, you may or may not get textures in here, right? So if I take this object, right click on it, and I mark it as an asset. Um, notice what this is going to do is this is going to give me a preview, but it's going to give me a preview based on the shaded mode or honestly, I've not 100% figured out how this whole thing works because it doesn't do a very good job of giving you good previews. But what you can do is you can jump over into your shading section right here and you can just inside of the shader, you can select the base color when you mark it as an asset. And then it'll actually like come in here with the proper textures, which is fine, I guess, but it's a very odd workflow. And so anyway, assets builder, by Casey Sheep is designed to help you quickly add those assets directly inside of Blender without having to mess around with those textures or anything like that. Plus it also gives you the ability to adjust things like angles as well as lighting for your different objects. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you dictate a folder um, that these are going to go into. So you can scroll down and you can pick a folder right here in order to do that. And so now what you're going to notice is if I click on this asset right here, there's a build assets button. And if I click on it, I'm going to get an error. The reason I'm going to get an error is because I don't actually have a camera in my model. And what this is doing is this is basically presetting the rendering in the scene so that this is going to give you a thumbnail. So I'm just going to do a shift A and I'm going to select a camera and you can use that camera. Now, if I select this object and click on default, notice what that's going to do is that's going to give me a rendered view of this object. Now, that's not necessarily what we want because what it's doing is it's using the Blender lighting settings in here in order to render this. So notice how if I was to add a point light, for example, move this over, and this is obviously not going to be a great rendering, but say that I've got a point light in here and it kind of lights this sofa right here. And then I was to click on the build assets button again, notice how it's going to re render it out and that's not going to do a whole lot. And so let's say that I was to bring this up to like 250 watts, something like that, something where we can actually see what this does to this camera. If we click on the build assets function with this selected, notice how this is going to re-update this with a little bit of a rendered view, but it's not very great, right? So what we wanna do is we actually want to scroll down and there's a cool function in here um, that we can use in order to quickly add these called, called Studio Presets. And so if I click in here, what the Studio Presets is going to do is it's gonna have this collection of different presets that you can use in order to light your models, which is very cool, actually. So if I click in here, right, and then move my mouse over my scene, if I click in here and then I click import studio presets and I bring this in, notice what this is doing is this is bringing in a lighting setup like this. You can use this lighting setup um, in order to light your previews, right? So if I move the sofa so that it's sitting right here like this, um, and then I was to click on the build assets with studio presets button right here. Whoops, you wanna make sure that you have that sofa selected. Notice how this actually gives you a really good thumbnail in here, just like this. So this is basically helping us set up the lighting in our scene um, so that we can quickly generate these asset previews. You'll notice how there's also options in here for camera angle presets. So notice how, for example, if I wanted to get more of like a straight on view, I could click on this preset right here. And with this object selected, if I click on studio presets, it's going to re-render this with a front view. So notice how it doesn't really matter where your camera is in your scene because this is just going to render this out 
just like this, which again, super cool, super helpful. Now, one thing I might do in this situation, because I want to bring multiple different, um, I, I want to render multiple different things in my scene, right? So I want to create all of these assets at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into a top down view real quick. I'm going to take all these assets and just move them right here. And I'm not going to bring the big one in here just because it may not fit. Uh, we'll just go with these three for right now. But if I select all of these assets and click on studio presets, notice how this is going to come in here and this is going to add every single one of them and render them out with thumbnails like this. And if you don't like it, then what you can do is you can pick a new camera angle in here or a camera preset. So for example, I could pick maybe this one right here, but then with those still selected, I can rerun this with my studio presets and notice how it's going to reset these up. Now in this case, because these have a ground underneath them, um, you're not actually able to see that. So you'd probably want more of like a top down view, but swapping that is really easy. So it's taking this and it's generating all of those thumbnails at once and adding these all as assets at once. Well now, notice how I can still click and drag this in, but I've got these really great thumbnails that are in here, just like this. And we could go ahead and we can pick one of the other presets as well. But let's say I was to bring this one in, I'm gonna move it forward a little bit so I've got a little bit le better lighting on my objects right here, but I can go ahead and reselect these, run it with the studio presets again, and it's going to update those objects just like this. And so if I open that folder, notice how it's saving those thumbnails in the folder. Um, so you can see them, but it hasn't actually saved the blend file in here. So what you wanna do is wherever you pick the folder to save your preview image, you wanna make sure that you save, you wanna make sure that you save your blend file in there as well. Once you do that and you've got your blend file and your uh, and your thumbnails in there as well, then you're going to be able to bring those assets in to future scenes as well using the asset browser. So um, from a setup standpoint, this is actually massively helpful. This is probably the tool that I'm going to use to set up pretty much all of my assets in the future just because it's so easy and it gives you such high quality thumbnails. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. If it's something you might use, I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.